With summer here, parents are itching to ask me questions about poison ivy. So rather than leave no leaf unturned, let me provide some information on this common problem. First, that motto, leaves of three, leave them be, that's quite true. It's only when the leaves, roots, stems, or twigs of plants are damaged or torn that the oil from this plant is released that will cause an allergic reaction in 70% of the population, usually within four hours to four days. A reaction characterized by red, itchy patches or blisters wherever the oil is deposited on the skin. Thus, the name of the game is to wash your child thoroughly with soap and water as soon as you suspect they've been exposed to poison ivy. A shower or hosing down of your child is far better than a washcloth, which can spread these oils further onto your child's body. And don't just wash your child, but wash the clothes, the shoes, toys, garden tools, and even the towel used after the shower, or the oil will be redeposited onto your child and maybe even onto you. In addition, the family pet might be carrying that oil home from the woods, so it might need a good hosing down as well. Once the oil's been removed, your child is no longer contagious. Even if blisters with fluid form, these blisters do not contain the oil and thus are not contagious, even if they look like they should be. Scratching will not make the rash spread if the oil's off of them, but it can lead to the rash becoming infected. Thus, treatment is directed to help reduce the itch and ease the suffering while allowing the allergic reaction to lessen and eventually stop. Cool compresses with drying agents such as calamine lotion or brown laundry soap or oatmeal baths will soothe the itch. A 1% steroid cream may also decrease inflammation on the skin and an oral antihistamine medication, well, that's available over the counter and it may also help relieve that itching. If the rash involves the face or the genitals, is getting worse despite the home treatments I recommended, or the skin looks infected with redness, warmth, swelling, or pus, please talk to your child's doctor who can determine if writing a prescription for steroids is needed to quiet down the inflammation or for an antibiotic if the rash has become infected. Hopefully, tips like this will do more than scratch the surface of your child's skin when it comes to dealing with the problem of poison ivy. This is pediatrician Dr. Lewis First from the University of Vermont Children's Hospital reminding you to always be first with your kids.